Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, our selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Ecuador sets a major precedent for indigenous rights. Mass protests continue against the coup in Sudan. Australia has deployed its military as its aged care crisis has worsened. And Honduran lawmakers have resolved the crisis in Congress. Ecuador's constitutional court has delivered a victory for the territorial and self-determination rights of indigenous peoples. Communities will now have a stronger say over oil, mining and other extractive projects on their lands. The court's ruling is based on a 2018 lawsuit filed by the Ayakofan people of Sinangoy. The community had been resisting illegal gold exploration along the Aguarico River. After they found out that the government had approved mining on their lands, they approached the court. 52 mining concessions were then cancelled. The Constitutional Court's ruling extend to all 14 indigenous recognized groups in Ecuador. Their territories cover 70% of the Amazon or 23 million acres of lands and forests in the country. The order says that a project cannot be carried out if it, I quote, generates excessive sacrifices to the collective rights of the communities and nature, end quote. However, if an indigenous community refuses a project, the government can move forward under exceptional circumstances. The ruling has still set a major precedent for indigenous people's rights to free, prior and informed consent. It will also protect indigenous groups against President Guillermo Lasso's plans to double oil production in Ecuador. The country's share of the rainforest has been damaged by two major oil spills, one in 2020 and another one just last month. Nearly 6,500 barrels of crude oil spilled after an OCP Ecuador pipeline ruptured in the eastern region. Around 21,000 square meters of the Cayambe Coca Reserve as well as the Coca River have been contaminated. Over 190 people were injured after Sudanese forces cracked down on protests on February 7th. Monday saw mobilizations in at least 19 cities across the country against the October 25th military coup. As protesters began their routine march to the presidential palace in Khartoum, they were attacked with tear gas, stun grenades and water cannons. Protests were also held in the cities of Omdurman, North Khartoum, Wad Madani and the Red Sea in Port Sudan. Security forces also deployed tear gas against protesters in Atbara, who had blocked the main road leading to Khartoum. The Central Committee of Sudanese Doctors has reported injuries from live bullets, projectiles, sound bombs and tear gas canisters. Protesters demanded justice for those killed and the release of activists arrested by junta forces. Barricades were also set up in the northern state to maintain the blockade of the Sudan-Egypt highway. Protesters have blocked key routes to Egypt, which is said to be supporting the junta. The resistance committees and the Sudanese Professionals Association are leading the protests. They have demanded complete civilian rule and rejected negotiations and power sharing with the military. They have also refused talks with the UN mission, citing its failure to explicitly condemn the coup. A statement added that the mission's consultations with the coup leaders had, had contradicted the aspirations of the Sudanese people. Australia has deployed 1,700 military troops to respond to a worsening crisis in the aged care sector. The recent Omicron-driven surge has disproportionately Im impacted aged care centres, accounting for over 500 deaths since January alone. There are currently nearly 12,000 active cases of COVID-19 among aged people. Outbreaks have been reported in nearly 1,200 care centres across the country. Health workers have been highlighting several issues including staff so shortages and late distribution of vaccine booster doses. Care providers have estimated that 25% of all shifts are going unfilled each week. Aged and disability care workers have been demanding adequate government assistance. They've been working in unsafe conditions without proper protective equipment. Health workers have also rejected the lack of proper wage reforms in the sector. The government had introduced two retention payments of $400 each to address the staffing shortage. However, disability care workers were excluded from this. Workers also argued that the payments were inadequate. They have blamed neglect and a lack of action by the conservative Scott Morrison government. Unions have argued that the government has failed to take the necessary steps after the crisis first hit back in 2020. And finally, an agreement among lawmakers has ended a political crisis in the Honduran Congress. Conflict grew in January over the leadership of the legislature. President Xiomara Castro's Libre Party had chosen Luis Redondo to serve as the chamber's president. 
This was part of an agreement between Libre and its coalition ally, the Salvador Party. However, 17 lawmakers from Castro's party opposed Redondo's candidacy and were subsequently expelled. Redondo was sworn in before 48 lawmakers on the 23rd of January. Meanwhile, the expelled Libre lawmakers joined the now former ruling party, the National Party, in a parallel session. These lawmakers appointed Jorge Caliz as the Congress president. Castro rejected the act as a right-wing attempt to hijack Congress. The crisis also threatened the position of Libre and its allies in the chamber. However, it was announced on, on the 7th of February that an agreement had been reached to end the conflict. It includes an endorsement of Libre and its allies and recognizes the presidency of Luis Redondo. Signatories have also ratified their support for President Castro. Meanwhile, Libre has reversed the expulsion of the 17 lawmakers. Jorge Caliz has said that he would support Castro's agenda of anti-transparency and anti-corruption as well. The Libre Party and its allies now have 68 members in the 128-seat chamber. And that's all we have on today's episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more on all of these stories, you can visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. And also do give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms for updates. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.